video about being a CS major at Georgia Tech, I mentioned all the CS classes I'd previously taken here. Today I decided I'd walk through each of these classes to give you a better idea of what to expect in case you ever take any of these classes. But first, no trip down memory lane would be complete without a rat cap. That's better. Let's get started. This is the first computer science class you'll take at Georgia Tech. Some people get to skip this by using AP credits or testing out of it, but otherwise, you'll start here. This class is designed to teach you the basics of programming using Python along the way. You'll also learn the basics of measuring how efficient your code is. I've been programming for about three years before taking this class, but I was new to Python. I was definitely able to pick it up quickly, but let's just say it's not gonna turn you into a Python wizard. This shouldn't be viewed as a CS class so much as an introduction to college that's designed specifically for CS students. You won't be doing any programming in here, but you'll learn about Georgia Tech, you'll develop your first resume, make a four-year plan, and you'll go to your first computer science career fair. This was taken in place of GT1000, which is the general introductory course, and it was pass-fail, and we only met once a week, so not bad at all. This is considered an introduction to object-oriented programming, so it is a super, super important class. It's taught in Java, but you're not expected to have any experience in Java since you start from the very beginning. Depending on your professor, your class experience will definitely vary, but when I took the class, we had to know very small details about Java, and we had to be able to code by hand. Was it a pain? Yes. Did it help me learn the language better? Yes. Once again, this class isn't designed to make you an expert in Java, but it definitely gives you a strong foundation to stand on for future use. Despite being labeled as a computer science class, this is discrete mathematics. As a result, it definitely felt more like a math class than a computer science class. Some parts of the class were just about being able to solve different types of problems, but we also had to learn how to do a bunch of different types of proofs. Though this class hasn't played a big role in helping me in my other computer science classes, it has played a big role in helping me in my mathematics courses. And now that we're leaving my freshman year, it's time for sophomore year. CS 1332 was honestly one of my favorite computer science classes I took at George Tech. I'm not sure that's a popular opinion in the community here, but I definitely felt like it helped me develop my data structures and algorithms very quickly. You'll barely do any of this in 1301 and 1331, and as a result, this is the class that gets you through your interviews. There's a strong focus on conceptual understanding, but you also need to learn how to implement those data structures and algorithms in Java. Some schools only teach you how to use the existing data structures, but I think implementing them from scratch definitely gives you a deeper level of understanding. I'll start by saying that I know the professor who taught this class has retired, and as a result, the class has probably changed since then. Back when I took the class though, I had to form a team and create an Android application with that team. This is good for a couple of reasons. The first is that it ensures all computer science students at Georgia Tech have some level of proficiency in Android. And the second one is that it actually allows you to implement and use the design principles taught in the class, giving you hands-on experience with them. A lot of the ideas, such as Agile, are really common in the workplace, but I feel a lot of people tend to overlook this class. If you pay attention and invest time in it, you'll actually learn some useful tools and ideologies in this class. This was my first low-level programming course I ever took at Georgia Tech. If you've ever wanted to know how computers work, this is the place to start. We literally started all the way down from gates, working our way up to machine code, then assembly, and finally ending in C. This class won't make you an expert, but it definitely exposes you to a side of computer science you don't always think about. Depending on what you want to do, this may not be a vital class for you, but I definitely feel that any developer has a lot to gain by learning about some low-level implementation. In a word, robots. In all seriousness, this was a great class. Not only do you get to play with robots, you'll also learn about perception, navigation, and the struggles with interacting with the real world. 
the hands-on element of this class was essential to it being so successful. We had to use a small robot to determine its location, classify images, and navigate through a course. Getting things to work was, put bluntly, hard. I put a lot of hours into this class, but there was ultimately a level of satisfaction of getting your robot to do all of the things it was supposed to be doing. Fortunately, the class is structured so that if you put the time in, you can do well, and I would also consider this another one of my favorite computer science classes. The successor to 2110, there are naturally a lot of similarities in their material. However, they're definitely structured differently and 2200 goes way further in depth. There's also a lot of concepts such as processes and threads or networks that you just won't cover in 2110 at all. This is another class that I'd recommend to anyone who's just trying to understand computers at a lower level. Much like 2110, I found this class really challenging, but it was definitely doable. The projects can definitely be daunting, but uh, they do a very good job of making sure you really know your material. This class is definitely designed to be a gradual introduction into artificial intelligence. Uh, having already taken 3630, parts of this class definitely could have moved faster. Admittedly, a lot of the material is super interesting, especially since it's such an active field, and I do feel that it gives you a pretty good foundation to stand on for your future AI classes. There's a lot of projects in Python that are designed to teach you how to implement the topics you learn about in the class. Fortunately, there's a lot of skeleton code provided, so don't worry too much. This class has a reputation for being one of the hardest computer science classes at Georgia Tech. Needless to say, I was pretty freaking scared. Fortunately, I didn't struggle in the class nearly as much as I expected to, but I do feel that the professor I had was a big factor in that. Though I had already taken data structures and algorithms, this class was very different. Uh, there's no coding, which means that everything is pretty much conceptual, writing pseudocode by hand, or doing proofs. Personally, I found the material really interesting, we spent a lot of time on dynamic programming, which is a really common interview question. I don't think this class is required for all threads, but regardless, I would definitely recommend it to any serious developer who's looking to really know their algorithms. This is part one of junior design. During this class, you'll learn about design strategies and you'll work with a client to produce an application for them. You'll be in a team of five or six people, and it definitely does have some similarities to 2340. Working with an actual client has definitely been a useful experience, and you'll learn a bunch of tips along the way on how to develop in an agile way. Unlike 2340, every team works on a different project, and as a result, you'll get to bid on projects that interest you. As a result, it's definitely a good idea to make sure that you and your teammates want to work on the same kind of thing. If you found this video helpful, feel free to hit that thumbs up button. I really do appreciate it. Go ahead and hit subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. I have a bunch more videos planned on computer science and Georgia Tech. That's been it. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.